the town of Pripyat stands as a stark reminder of the danger inherent in nuclear power. 43,000 people lived here before the Soviet Union ordered a complete evacuation after the accident in 1986. This was your seat. <laughs> Dima Popov was a student at the time. Can you tell me about the day when the reactor exploded? What was that like? And how did you feel when you found out you couldn't come back to Pripyat to live? Восприняла это просто как приключение, наверное, что да, но родители, наверное, понимали, но не верили до конца, до последнего, что не разрешат вернуться в город обратно. Right after the disaster, it took Soviet workers three months to entomb the toxic remains of the destroyed reactor. That's what the original sarcophagus was for. It was a quick fix, but was never intended to be a long-term solution for decontamination. And as years passed, the structure showed increasing risk of collapse. The new safe confinement is the solution for the next 100 years. So right now we're underneath this massive shell that has been built over the top of the reactor here in Chernobyl. Soon the operations will be taken from the international community that are working on it and given back to the Ukrainians. After the fall of the Soviet Union, Ukraine looked abroad for help cleaning up Chernobyl. 27 countries contributed funding for the design and construction of this massive project. It took 20 years, 1,200 workers, and $1.8 billion to complete. The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development is the primary donor and has coordinated work since the beginning. Simon Evans heads the Chernobyl Shelter Fund. Why was it so important to build this structure now? And we needed some sort of solution that would be able to uh, give us a, a safety and security and decommissioning over a very longer term period. And, and this is what we have now. The new crane system is the centerpiece of the work that is about to start. It will carry the tools for taking apart the decaying sarcophagus and removing contaminated material for safe storage. But the confinement must be sealed completely before this hazardous process can begin. This work has been a priority over the past year. The arch is designed to seal hermetically to the old structure, which isn't flexible. How tall is it? 110 meters. And how heavy? 36,000 tons. Biggest movable land-based object ever. The confinement has reduced outside radiation levels by 90% since it was installed last November. But the steel roof alone cannot stop all contamination from escaping. Workers installed a powerful ventilation system designed to keep airborne particles inside. They also built 85-foot concrete walls to cover end sections of the old building. We've got only 20 minutes for the roof. It's according to the rules of the Radiation Safety Department. So some of the biggest challenges we had in the last year is sealing all the arch to the existing structures. So we have to have this very carefully developed polymer system. And that's the problem area at the moment for the dose rates we're encountering there. So currently the contractor has guys up there drilling, and when they drill a hole, they're five minutes a day. What would have happened if none of this happened, if you hadn't put the shell on, you hadn't done all this work? What was built after the accident was an absolute heroic effort, but it was never designed to last. And over time, it would collapse and massively contaminate this whole area. So we had to provide a long-term solution to slowly start taking the old reactor apart, and that's what we've provided. But the job of cleaning up Chernobyl is even bigger than dealing with the contaminated material under the new safe confinement. When the Ukrainians take control, they will also have to deal with nuclear waste from three other reactors that were functioning at the time of the accident. 21,000 fuel rods from those reactors are currently housed in storage that was only designed to last 15 years. When work starts next year, the fuel rods will be transported here where they will be cut and packed for long-term storage. It's projected to take eight to 10 years for all of the rods to complete the journey. Now we're entering the main hot cell. This is the heart of the facility. This is where all the real technology and processing starts with very radioactive fuel. And behind me is a very complicated, what's called a damaged fuel table. So you have specialist manipulators here. You have the ability to twist, to drill, to fix, to weld, to reconfigure. 
It's like an operating table for right. nuclear fuel. Can I use it? This is nuts, mate. <laughs> you can pick this up with these. The centuries worth of maintenance that the site will require underscores one thing about Chernobyl that hasn't changed. It's still a pillar of the region's economy. Denise Godovsky is training to be a crane operator at the confinement. Не, ну это работа особенная, так же как единственный кран единственный в мире такой аналогов ему нету. То есть я очень хотел сюда попасть. Ну работа на самом деле очень важная. Jobs connected to the plant continue to be one of the only sources of income in the region, even if workers have to live farther away than they did 40 years ago. After the Soviet Union evacuated Pripyat, many of the residents went to Slavutic. Built from scratch outside the 30-kilometer exclusion zone, it became the new home for displaced workers. They've made the hour-long commute to maintain the plant for more than three decades. The niece is part of the new generation. Бабушка у меня была инженером эксплуатации связи, а дед работал в операторском зале и до самого закрытия станции. And how do you feel about the fact Ukraine is about to take over operations at Chernobyl? Do you think they're ready? Ну, я думаю, да. Будем на это рассчитывать, надеяться. 